The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to the Port Charlie Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Fucking finally, we get another one of these up and going. Holy shit. <laughs> Between technical difficulties and real life happening, um, yeah. it's it's nice to finally get it back up, though. Yes. And as you hear, that is my co-host, Julia. Hello. Yes, and I am Gomer the Ranting Thespian. Uh, I do want to start with a bit of an announcement. Uh, Namio, at least for now, is not going to be as much on the show because she is, she has fallen so far behind. She's like, you know what? Just, just keep going as though I'm not coming back. I might come back at some other time, but for right now, just basically one of those. Go on without me, guys. Uh, which it, it's sad because she was the one I started the show with, and she's a lot of fun. But you know, things happen. She's she's been busy as fuck. So, I, I, it's totally understandable, and I always wish her the best. Well, I say that like I'm never going to talk to her again. Of course I'm going to talk to her again. <laughs> you know, she is a member of my site, independent of this show, so of course I'm going to talk to her again. Ugh. So, the title cards and everything will be updated as soon as possible, and all of that good stuff. Um, and since since the last time, I've actually picked up a new patron. Uh, oh, Very over on... Exciting. Yes, over on Patreon, uh, Tim Sheridan. I believe I mentioned him on one of the more recent Thespian talks, but it, it's worth mentioning here as well. Uh, he he is uh, he is pledging a dollar per production, which every little bit helps. And that's going to go hopefully within the next couple of months. Um, you know, getting a day job uh, notwithstanding, I'll be able to upgrade my microphone. Which, <laughs> yeah, it, it's not horrible, but at the same time, I can do better. But you make do with what we what you got. Um, but how how before we get into what's happened over the past what how what two three months something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Before we get into all of that, uh, how have you been, Julia? I've been great. Part of the real life happening where we couldn't record is because I moved cross country. I have a new apartment, a new job. Um, so life has been picking up, um, and, uh, it's starting to settle in a little bit, so I'm glad we were finally able to sync up our schedules. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and you live closer to my girlfriend than I do. I, I live in Chicago now. Yeah. So. And then it's like, I went to be there. <laughs> for, for a very obvious reason. Um. But you know, hey. But Chicago's also, you know, Chicago's a great place. You know. It is. I, I just wish I'd had more of a chance to visit while I was up, you know, in the general Midwest area. But you know, being on the road, driving through, I drove through Chicago a lot, but never really got to sit down and visit it. But oh well. Who knows? That may change later this year. Who knows? <laughs> Do a live show. There you go. That would be awesome. Yeah. Two of us in the same room. <laughs> Yes. Uh, but for now, oh god, three months of material to go over. We probably will not get everything. Although I we are. Like it'll be an overview. A lovely, lovely overview. Oh, yes. So, um. Oh god, where do we want to start first? Do we want to start with Luke? Do we want to start with Sunny? Oh gosh. Um, I guess let's get Luke over with. <laughs> I'm, I'm about up to here. <laughs> Uh, with Luke right now. Ah, uh, um, yeah, so... I just, I feel like they have, the storyline has both been dragged out too far, mm -hmm. and then now it's all kind of, not even snowballing. I was going to say, ha also happening too quickly. It's not happening too quickly. It could happen way faster, and I'd be happy. Um, but we had all these red herrings, and finally we're at, seemingly, the crux, which is Aunt Pat. Mm -hmm. Or, or a big sister, Pat, to uh, Luke and Bobby, and Luke. No one's quite said the words, but DID, right? Is what yeah. we're thinking. Yeah. Um. Wow. That's. I mean, that's a huge, huge thing to retcon for such an established character. Oh yeah, because like that means he's been there when when he first came to town, when he raped Laura, when he saved the world, when when he came back into Port Charles and ended up offing Frank Smith. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. throughout. I mean, they're all uh, Lucky's and Lulu's childhoods mm-hmm. um, coming back to town like again because he you know leaves constantly. I just I wonder if they're going to try to say that his I guess alter. Mm-hmm. Um, was responsible for anything in his past because Luke's never been this heinous, no. right? As is this alter the kind of stuff he's been doing? So are they going to try to say that? Not to, you know, but like what happened with Laura? Like, are they going to say that? Are they going to sort of change history that way? It's like I because kinda... Luke has sort of accepted responsibility for that. Yeah. So just it's... as an example. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't think that would be that better not be one of those things they retcon. Because I think that's one case of one of those stories done, you know, a little bit better than most. Most people, you know, rapists would go to jail or whatever. But here, he actually, you know, he he, he realizes what he did. He had an "Oh my God, what have I done?" moment, and he comes around, and you know, Laura ends up falling in love with him, and we all know where all that goes. But which definitely not necessarily the most realistic, but you know, well, it, but that. The not going to jail thing. I don't know if you know anything about <laughs> what happens in real life, but it's generally I yeah. mean, the percentage that actually get prosecuted is. They do go to jail, yeah. Luke didn't. No, no, no. I'm saying they don't. They oh, rarely they don't. get prosecuted. Yeah, oh, that's right. We have a shitty legal system. Um, but anyway, no, I think also that storyline has already been retconned so many times because the way it was originally handled mm-hmm. versus how they talked about it years later, it, you know, they've shifted that that framing a lot so i think adding an altar to it i think just at this point i really i really hope they don't go there is what i'm saying i guess but yeah. then how i mean how are they going to explain how he's been there this whole time and no one has noticed yeah that's i mean and, and, and i think you mentioned you know the times where he goes off i think that's what they're going to try and tie into that like the times he goes off is when the, the, the dark side was coming out and had to come out and he just left Okay, now that, now that's, that could be interesting, yeah. Yeah. Now that, and that would be very plausible. It's all off screen, nobody sees it, so of course, nobody thinks about it. Okay, yeah. Alright, okay. Well, I'll see, I'll see how this plays out. I am, I am excited to see Patricia. Mm-hmm. Um, they did, uh, release a casting announcement for her, just, um, I mean, I just saw it today. I don't know when it came out exactly. Yeah. Um, but that's going to be super exciting. So we are actually going to see her soon. Um, which, since she's barely been mentioned until recently, I don't... Like, I mean, no one in town knows her, so we don't know... We've, we've no framework. Is she going to be, like, a villain? Is she going to get along with her newfound extended family? Yeah. And... It's be really interesting. A new Spencer. I'm excited for just any Spencer to come back. Because Lucky is who the hell knows where. Laura's yeah. off who the hell knows where. Like, Ethan. I mean, just any Spencer I'm just thrilled about, so. Yeah, I mean, hey, we've had Cassidines come out of the woodwork the past year. Let's have some more Spencers, you know? Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. As, as a group of villains, whenever I, I, like, think of, like, well, one of the things I do is I, I intend to tinker around with a game maker or whatever and I need villains, my standard villain villains are Cassadines. <laughs> mm-hmm. Naturally, namely, you know, the Cassadine brothers from the from the 80s, you know, Mikos, Tony, Victor, all them. But, um, it, it does extend to the more evil ones. But, um, so I, I like them for being the, you know, the, the go-to evil because holy shit. And speaking of Cassadines, speaking of Cassadines, real quick, holy shit, Nicholas. Nicholas, okay, I, whatever else is going on with him, because I'm not necessarily a fan of some of it, Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say, Tyler, Christopher, and those scenes when, uh, Spencer was injured and he went to the hospital, Mm -hmm. Tyler, Christopher just, I mean, did an amazing, amazing job. Yeah. And I think he's had some hit or miss material to work with lately. Um, and that was just stellar. Yes. That's what it was. It's like, oh it's like I wanted I wanted to just reach through and give him a hug. You know, I, I, I don't I don't cry from T V or anything easily, so it's like most most of my thing is like I just wanna hug them. It, it was just heartbreaking. And Nicholas, I've I have vocally 
question his uh, <coughs> abilities as a parent. Yeah. Um, but you you could really you could I mean you could feel how much he cared mm-hmm. and how much he was hurting, and that was just really nice. Oh yeah. I mean, regardless of how well one does in the general day to day stuff. I think a, a lot, if not all, the parents on this on this show, at least uh, that I've seen in the past, say, couple of years since I started watching again, they they generally do love their kids, and, and I I I I'll even extend that to Sonny, and we all yeah. and people know I he is not my I am not his biggest fan, but I can give him that credit for all for all of the bullshit Sonny pulls, he he does at least love his kids. Yeah, I can give him that credit. I will say, Heather is a little trick-or-happy when it comes to her kids. Yeah, just a little bit. But in her own way, I think she does care. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, I take your point. Yeah. But, but yes. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Uh, So, so, possible DID with Luke, which I admit I'm a little disappointed because I was hoping, oh man, you could have could have brought back Bill Eckert and, and had all sorts of you know, had some other deeper mystery or whatever. But then it's like, oh it's just D I D really? Oh I mean I mean don't well, get has, me wrong, if they GH, do it hmm? has GH done it before? I, well, oh, oh my god, Connie, Kate, yeah. holy crap. Uh, <laughs> I was about I to say because what, wait, what's the show? Wait, which one is it that had like ten thousand characters with D I D it was some family and like, you know, it, Hereditary, so it ran in the family, and it was like all of them. Was it one left to live, or My there was an, anyway? That was off topic, but oh wow, <laughs> there there was another show that I saw briefly. But I, yeah, GH, the only one I can think of is is yeah, Kate and Connie, um, which I thought they actually did handle that really well. Mm-hmm. This has been a little shakier, I thought. Yeah. yeah, and 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 with Tracy's more recent scenes with Luke. You know, you could tell. You could tell Tony Geary. Oh God, he, is, is, does if he does does he have an Emmy? I think he's had several Emmys. He needs another one. Super. Give him another one. <laughs> it's like it's like he is fucking earning it. Oh. Yeah, I, and I I love I love Tracy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sort of off and on about Luke, but I love Tracy and Luke together. Yeah. So I really really want to kind of see how she handles this and how they like kind of figure this out together and work through this. Cause that scene where he kind of came back to himself mm-hmm. and they sort of had that moment, like he was so terrified and vulnerable and like, he just needs to, oh, I don't even know, but, but I really, really want to see them work through this. Cause I, I always, I like them together way more than I ever liked Luke and Laura together. Yeah. Um, and I really want Tracy to sort of shine in the storyline. I really hope they give her, the story, uh, the uh, focus somewhat, and, and not have it be all about like Bobby and um, Pat and Luke. Yeah, definitely. Because whatever happens with with Pat, it's going to affect Tracy in the end. Yeah. And the writers need to remember this. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's going to affect her. It's going to it's going to affect a lot of people, honestly. Because yeah, Luke really... is Luke is one of those. He's basically a hometown hero. Uh huh. I Very really literally. hope that this storyline, you know, even if it's not right away, I hope it sets off like a chain of events or like a serious set of dominoes that brings some more Spencers back to town. Because, like, to me, General Hospital, like, is the Spencers. Like, I know everyone sort of has their family, and, like, I know for some people it's, like, they're the corner maids, like, where are all the corner maids? And I was always kind of like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I like to see Dylan back, and, you know, I, I don't, like, hate all the corner maids, obviously. Like, I love Tracy and everything, but... It's not like that family is not, like, the heart of, the sh- of my sh- You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. Uh, the, the quarter mains being... For me, the quarter mains is definitely a big staple of the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, between them and the Spencers, definitely. Yeah. And, and the Cassidines to give some sort of antagonist role every now and then. Right. Which is, which is why I'm going to be sad when Helena finally kicks the bucket. I... She's one of those villains she's... I love to hate. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way she's, like, living out on an island for the rest of her days. She will so be back. Nicholas is an idiot if he thinks he can actually control her. No, of course she's going to try and control him because, because of course, Helena wants, you know, all of the control. And, and, and of course, how does she threaten Nicholas? Going through his son, if I remember right. <laughs> did, she, did she actually threaten Spencer? 
I think, though, not directly. Oh, I think she threatened to, like, take everything away from both of them. She would never hurt Spencer. Yeah, which which is a good thing, because, eh, hey, you know, he's yeah. the next in line for the crown, he's, he's the next in line for princehood, so, you know, right. you know, Although kiss all the useless, ass. what useless royalty? What the fuck are they the prince of, anyway? I, Nothing useful. Yeah, Nothing useful. No, not, not in America, at least. Maybe, a, may, oh, yeah. maybe an island. Wait. <laughs> uh, and, of course, now, you know, thanks to Nicholas... We be, oh, no, sorry, go ahead. Well, thanks to Nicholas, you know, you know, chumming up with Helena, at least temporarily, you know, he now knows that Jake is really Jason. Another storyline I wish would move slightly less slowly. <laughs> I am freaking out over here. Yeah. I can't, I just can't, I can't handle it. Yeah, and, and he knows, in, in he, it looked like at one point he was about to tell Sam, but of course, yeah, things and then get, get interrupted. interrupted. Oh, of course. And then Watch is going to come out later that he knew Sam's going to be pissed at him, and he's... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You think Sam was pissed at Patrick for not telling her that Jason was alive for slightly longer, but then died? She's going to... She's going to hate Nicholas. Oh, yeah. She's just oh going to unload on him. Which, the thing I've seen... I've seen whenever people unload on Nicholas, it's like, I want to look at these people and say, give him a chance to explain himself. God damn it. I mean, I mean, yeah, you know, it, it's still, what he did was not good, what he did was... Except, in this case, it's like, oh, I'm not going to tell her because I want ELQ? What? Yeah, because apparently, uh, I want to I want to say that Jason did have some stock. Yeah, yeah, it's to do with the, the stock, um, like, who has what um, shares so that they can vote and whatever, and he wants to get all the shares so he can take over ELQ. But, like... It's not like Nicholas needs the money. Like he's he's pretty set, you know. Now, yeah. especially now that he's wrested power from Helena. So, what on earth is his motivation for not telling Sam the truth and telling Jake the truth, for that matter? Yeah, I I think I think in terms of maybe going after ELQ, it could possibly be maybe he's he's doing worse than what he's imagining, and it could just it. it you know, his holdings are starting to go downhill and he needs a little bit of a boost. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, that's possible. Yeah. And I, maybe that, yeah, maybe that's to do with his motivation, but what I'm saying is, like, not a good enough reason. Like, even with that, like, I right. don't care, Nicholas. You need to do better. Yeah, I can agree with that. You know, just, uh... <laughs> uh and, of course, the reason why, you know, Helena and company wanted it, well, they needed a front now, didn't they? Uh, to push drugs through now and with the, the, this whole cartel basically mostly broken up now because Faison we don't know where he is anymore Helena is supposedly quote unquote exiled to the island Luke's in custody especially after biting Scott's ear off <laughs> so, so who's still in play is Jack not Jack's um, uh, Jerry Jerry is Jerry doing things, doing the various things. I have not um, heard. But they still have Robin. Oh, wait, yeah, who even has Robin now? Hmm. If Helena's been exiled and Nicholas supposedly has her under lock and key, or whatever, then who's got Robin? That's a good question. I'm going to assume either Jerry or Faison. Oh, okay, okay. And who knows what they're doing. Maybe they're, maybe they're having Robin you know, try and revive both Victor and Stavros again. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Look, okay, I love Kimberly McCullough, right? Mm -hmm. However you say that name. Yeah. Um, she, I think she's great. I wish her all the best. But this has been one of the most frustrating character non-exits ever. Like, I get that she wanted to leave the door open mm -hmm. and that she wanted to pursue other projects, but this is, it's so frustrating for the show to sort of have her in this back and forth, like, oh, Robin's back. Oh, now she's been kidnapped again. Oh, because they can't come up with a good. There's no like internal motivation for Robin to not come home to her family, so they have to keep it this weird external kidnapping thing to force her to like revive dead villains, which is great or whatever. But it's just they need to like resolve Robin's storyline one way or the other. They need to bring her back and resolve things properly. It's just this weird limbo thing with Robin, and I really don't like it. 
Yeah, it's like when when she first went away, when when Victor first came and got her for the WSB and all of that stuff initially, and she basically had to leave her family without really telling them why, and, and, and ended up going through all of this, and I'm sitting there and it's like, you guys are... I felt like it was character assassination a little bit on the part of Robin. Yeah, well, they had to sort of bend over backwards and jump through ho- hoops to make sense of how and why Robin would leave her family again after having been, having been torn away from them and trying to get back to them for, what was it, two years? Yeah. And they, it, they were trying to make the show work for Kimberly and Riccolo's, like real life, and... Mm-hmm. It's, and that didn't really serve the story. No, I mean, there are ways you could do it to have it serve the story. I don't think that was it. Yeah. I mean, just, having yeah. having her, you know, like like when she initially left for that for that two years that she was missing, her death could be faked again. You know, yeah, it's been used, but it would be reliable. It would work. Patrick would think she was dead. Poor Patrick, you know, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes. But it would still work. On, on a story, you know, on a story basis, it would get the character out of there. You wouldn't have to worry about how many hoops you have to jump through to make to get for character motivation. It would be like she would be kidnapped, made to look like she was dead, and there you go. Only to come back later, and then when Patrick finds out that Robin is really alive and that Victor Cassidyne was the one that kidnapped her, well, um, I could see Patrick throwing Victor outside, you know, out of a really tall building. You know, it's amazing that any any of these people ever believe that anyone's really dead. Yeah, I know, right? Ever. They should just learn to always question it. Yes. I think that's why Luke's an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but yeah, the only people that you can really believe are dead are the ones that were, like, really, really old when they died. Yeah, except, okay... Let me just say that one person who has remained dead, and this is utter bullshit when everyone else has come back from the dead, like, at least twice, Mm -hmm. is George D. Jones. What is that nonsense? I know, right? you know Lindsay Leatherman would be up for coming back, because she's come back as, like, a ghost. Yeah. Like, bring Georgie back. Yeah. And, of course, they'd have to find a way to write in Georgie coming back, because wasn't she killed off by, what was it, the, the... It was the text message killer or whatever yeah. that bullshit was. Yeah, so they've so got to, they've got to tie that in there somehow. And and who knows? Maybe maybe it would have yeah, something okay, to do what? with. You know what? You know, I will forgive them for all this Robin nonsense. If mm-hmm. when Robin does eventually come back, she brings Georgie with her. That would work. <laughs> yes, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, but speaking of one Georgie Jones. Oh yes, little baby Georgie. Eee, it's yeah. Spinelli. Yay! Oh my God. Okay. This has just been a whirlwind. I was not at all, like, spoiled or, or whatever. I did not know he was coming back. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, to, like, apparently stay-ish. So I am torn because I'm so excited to have Spinelli back. But then, I mean, anyone who follows me on Tumblr has seen how deeply I fell for Nathan and Maxie. Mm-hmm. This is just tragic. I know, it's like, ah. I love Spinelli. I love his character. I, I love just how nervous he is, how geeky he is, and that that one trope, that sesquipedalian loquaciousness, or however the hell you pronounce it. I may have pronounced it right without realizing it. I don't know. But Maybe. but but his want to use long words and everything, I love that about him. What I am yeah. not liking about him this time around is him making a play for Maxie when she's clearly taken. Yeah, because you, you said, I wanted to he said nervous, right? But he's got this, like, newfound confidence. Which, I mean, he had sort of gotten there, I mean, before he left last time, like, for good. But but he's definitely, like, trying to be all smooth now. I mean, and not just, like, trying to be. Like, I mean, he's coming off, like, super, super, like, I know you want me. Like, let's do this. And Maxie's just like, what? What do I do with this? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, And, of course, it just so happens she just helped Johnny Zakara escape the law. That was so cute. Not, okay, wow, not the helping him escape the law part, but, um, the, sorry. <laughs> that, the, there was that really lovely nod to Brandon Brush and Kristen Storm's real-life marriage and baby when they talked about, um, what he would maybe name his daughter someday, Harper. So cute. 
Um, but yeah, it was really nice to have Johnny back briefly. I will say, this is a little off topic, off of Maxie and Nathan and Spinelli, I mean, but I was really disappointed that Johnny didn't hit on Olivia. He hit on, like, every other ex he had in town, and he didn't <laughs> hang out and flirt with Olivia, and I was so mad. Well, she was she was busy getting knocked I up by Julian. Them. But yes. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Because uh, Olivia's gonna have a Jerome baby. You know, I'm the the one thing I will say about that is that I'm glad there's not an actual question of paternity. Like, I mean, I guess you know the characters there's going to be, but I'm glad that like we know it's Julian's baby, mm-hmm. and we don't have to like wait like this whole thing with Avery. Yeah. Because I will, I will believe till my dying day that Morgan is her father, and you cannot convince me otherwise. So. Um, yeah, so I, I, like, I'm glad that with Olivia, at least, like, that's not in question, so we don't have to, like, wait and wait and wait till it's, like, you yeah. know, years later, lives ruined, bloodshed. Mm-hmm. You know, siblings being blown up in warehouses. Uh, oh. Yeah, because, uh, cause, yeah, Alexis, of course, she found, you know, he told Alexis and Julian this, that, that Ned, that Ned, uh, told them rather that he is the father of olivia's baby and alexis is immediate like what no 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 no, bullshit we went through this before motherfucker you know when i was pregnant with christina (laughs) that was really nice that they acknowledged that instead of just trying to slide that past the audience i like when they're like self-aware oh yeah that's one of the things i've loved about gh is how self-aware they can be and this is one of those times i was like and i'm sitting there like i remember that you know you know, you know, Ned made like he was the father of Alexis's baby, which, you know, really pissed off his then-girlfriend. I think he was dating Chloe at the time. I want to say. Um, I wasn't watching then. Who's Chloe? Chloe Morgan. She was a distant quarter main cousin. Oh, I think I remember hearing something about that. Yeah. Yeah, eventually she, f- when Stavros was running around, uh, event, you know, in the late 90s, early 2000s, she f- realized she figured out who he was. He f- he figured out. She figured out who she was, and then he killed her. Aww. Because she knew too much. You know that sort of thing, and Frank Stefan for it. Oh. <laughs> it's like yeah. Uh, but eventually, eventually he was cleared, and we everybody figured out. Oh wait, that's fucking Stavros. Okay, let's go arrest him. He's in a bottomless pit. You know, with all this rehashing of history, and you know. Alexis bringing up Christina that way, and then Michael keeps referencing all the damage Christina was dealt because of Sunny. Maybe we'll fucking see Christina sometime soon, too? I know good. Lindsay Morgan, the last actress who played her, is now starring on The 100, which you should all go watch. Um, she's stellar on it. But maybe they could either bring back... Um... Oh, I know her name. <gasps> She's delightful. The, the other one. Uh, the other Christina. I can't even remember. Okay, it. I'm going to look it up. Um, anyway, I would love if they brought her back, but even if they don't, they should recast her at least and bring Christina back. Yeah. That would be that would be a good idea. I, I would love to see how she would react to all of this, especially with... Yeah. Especially with... Oh, shit. Okay, I, I guess... I guess now's as good a time as ever to talk about Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because... I think the last time we were on here, he, I think he was in Pentonville, or he was on his way to Pentonville. And he's in there. He, he's having the back and forth with Johnny. Julian, who is trying to get away from Luke, trying to whack him, gets himself put in there by confessing to um, um, Anthony Zakara's murder. I think it was Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. Which, of course, we all know that, that, that Johnny did. But he managed to convince the courts that he did it. And, of course, that got Johnny free. And while they're all in there, they they find out, oh, shit, you know, Luke and company have planned – are, are going to try and take out a bunch of people on the Haunted Star. Do those people happen, happening to be Michael and Lucas? So they bust out of there with Ava and Franco, who is trying to get to, oh. to Shady Brook so he can keep Heather from – getting to Nina, which well, I'll get on that one in a moment. Cause, yeah. Because I'm, yes, I'm really liking the direction that's going. Um, 
And after after a small shootout, Ava gets shot and gets it basically falls off a bridge. You know, even though Sonny tried to save her. Ostensibly. Which, yeah, basically. Um, you know, Sonny makes it to the Honda Star as Michael not only finds the bomb, I, I think it was uh, Jake. Yeah, Jake is the one who planted it under orders from Helena. And then he breaks through while he's in the interrogation room with Sam. And he's like, yeah, call them. There's a fucking bomb on there. Tell them to get to the fuck. Tell them to get everybody off to safety. Michael gets the bomb out. Out to, like, the dock or whatever. Or, or deck, rather. And that, that's when Sonny appears. Sonny just takes the bomb, jumps overboard, boom. So he's a hero. Which, hey, you know, good on him. You know, I, I, I applaud that. And, and, of course, he survives, naturally. He survives being blown up underwater. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Jason supposedly dies from one gunshot and falling into the water, but Sonny survives a bomb? Yeah. I mean... Like, I mean, obviously... Jason isn't really dead, but the people just sort of, everyone but Sam just sort of accepted that. Yeah. What? What? Uh, I think, the only way I think Sonny could survive it is if, like, he, like, tossed the bomb, if he, like, pushed the bomb away in time yeah. or whatever, and was yeah. swimming away, and the concussion just, concussive, concussive blast just, like, hit his head or something. And I know, I know a lot of people don't like Sonny, and you don't always like Sonny, yeah. but I would just also like to point out that well, Sonny can be a pretty shit person. Like, I'm not denying that. Yeah. He he, he does, like, love his kids, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, but that also extends to, like, his family and then people who sort of have become sort of part of the family. Yeah. You know, like, like Rob is a really good friend of his. And so, um, and, like, you know, Max and Spinelli, they're sort of extensions of this whole thing. And, like, Julian, okay, I'm just saying, killed his sister. Not Ava. The other one in the eighties or whatever, Olivia, like mm -hmm. shot and killed his own sister. Yep. He's not like, but people seem all game for like Julian and Alexis and like, like Julian's such a, I think people like people who really like Julian and then like hate Sunny. Like I don't get it. Like cause I don't, I don't. Julian is like as bad if not worse than Sunny. Yeah. And Sunny never intended to murder any of his family members. Let's yeah, just say true. that. Yeah. I did kind of enjoy their romance in jail. Though. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty great. I do. I also do kind of like how how Franco eventually got them kind of by the balls at one point. Yeah. Just it's like, wow, that's kind of amazing. And it shows that Franco has some big ones himself. Uh, at least when it comes to the Sonny and Julian, because he knows who they are. He knows their reputation. And he still, you know, steps up to them. It's like, dude, you got balls. <laughs> That's all I gotta say on that one. Um, so of course, you know, Sonny survives, and Michael. Oh God, Mikey! Ugh. It's like on the one hand, I, I I'm on his side when it comes to, you know, being pissed at Sonny, and not wanting to have anything to do with him, even going so far as to what it sounded like at first, going after his you know legitimate assets, you know, making him pay for killing his father when the law doesn't. You know, because hey, guess what? The governor's daughter just happened to be on the haunted star that night. That that girl Ivy that Nicholas was a, was with every now and then. She's the governor's daughter. I actually kind of like that, or I mean, because it it very neatly gets Sunny out of prison in a way that does like make sense in universe without yeah. having to like explain away some crap. Um, that gets him, like, like some, like, legal something, whatever. Like, because there's no way he was getting out of that uh, prison yeah. sentence. And it, so so I like that that wrapped that neatly up. But I also liked it because there was a reason for that random girl. Because we were all just kind of like, who is that? Like, is that going to be a thing? Should we be paying attention? Like, why is... Because there's never... I mean, there's never random characters. They don't have the budget for a lot of, like, you know, supporting cast or, like, you know, guest stars, really. Yeah. So you know if someone's getting screen time and interacting with a major day player, or not not a day player, the opposite of that, a major player, that they're going to be someone, yeah. and I just could not figure her out. And so I was like, oh, okay, she's there to be that plot point to get Sunny out of jail. All right, okay. She, she is Chekhov's hottie. She, okay. <laughs> that's, um, how, that's how I go by it because, well, all I, I don't really know much about her other than she's the governor's daughter and she is hot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she, she 
she is exactly that. Um, okay. Yeah. This is jumping a little bit because it's not directly Sunny related, but it pisses me off because well, Sunny's getting off scot free, and I do like Sunny, and I'm obviously glad he's sticking around. Yeah. I'm so mad that Ava, mm -hmm. who's yes done some terrible things, but nothing. I mean, she I don't think she's done anything like much worse than things Sunny has ever done. Yeah. Um, is not only She's got this murder sentence that would be hanging over her head if people knew she was alive. Yeah. So she can't go home to her family. She, um... And now Silas... I mean, this is now... Now we're really up to the minute, because this was just, I think, on Friday's episode. Silas drops the bombshell that she's dying. Yeah! What the fuck is that shit? If Mara West leaves General Hospital, I am be so furious. Yeah. I fucking love her. It's been like, oh, but... I, you know there's going to be some way of coming through for her. <laughs> there, there better be, because I... Oh, I'm not even kidding. I think Mora West is the best new character on GH in... Or actor, whatever, in years. Yeah. Like, the best new addition. Oh, yeah. I'm, I am not going to deny that. She is, she is great. She's a powerhouse. She has chemistry with a doorknob. <laughs> and... <laughs> I just, oh my god, she's she's amazing, and they would be they would be fools to lose her. Oh yeah, they would. Oh lordy, but yeah. I mean, if I had to pick a Jerome to leave the show, well, actually, I would pick Kiki. <laughs> and, and then, but I'd also pick Julian before Ava. I mean, I want Ava to stick around this show forever. Yeah, for as for as long as possible. Yeah. Uh, I don't blame you. Uh, I really don't blame you. Oh boy, so so let's see. Sonny got pardoned. Michael got pissed. Well, I I, I I cannot blame him there because hey, you know, yeah, even though you know he's a hero and everything, he still killed AJ. Yeah, I would care about that more if I gave a fucking shit about AJ. So yeah, like I I logically in my brain I get why Michael's upset, but I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Oh. But um, but yeah. So, so of course, with all of that out of the way, with all with Sunny out, Michael's like, yeah, Law's not gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And it looked like he was gonna go all corporate raider on Sunny's legitimate businesses. And yeah. then Avery. Right, because since Ava's presumed dead, uh, Avery's custody is in question. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, yes, Sunny, you know, got initially got custody of Avery. And I like how they played it up. It's like somebody is going to be filing for custody against Sonny. You know, it could have been Kiki, could have been Michael. Turns out, it was Michael. And when that, that started that happening... That was a nice switch, yeah. Because yeah. you thought it was going to be Kiki, and then they switched it out. Yeah. Nice switch. It caused me to go, oh, I don't know, Mikey. I don't know about this, man. I mean, yeah, I, I see the words he's saying, and I, and I believe that Michael believes them. You know, that he wants Avery to be in a more safe environment, away from the violence that Sonny's life can bring. I mean, and, and he points out all of these examples over the years. Michael himself being shot in the head, put in a coma for a year. You know, Carly being shot in the head by Sonny himself, and, and that was because, uh, you know, one of the Alcazars was trying to help her give birth, and he, Sonny thought she was in danger, so he shot him, bullet went through him, hit her. You know, you know, and of course, everybody tends to point back to, in some way, shape, or form, back to Lily, who was pregnant with Sonny's kid, and got in a car, and got blowed up. I'm still annoyed that it hasn't been revealed that she survived, and that that baby was Sabrina. Oh, God, that would way. be... Have you seen that theory floating around? I'm still annoyed that hasn't that isn't true. I may have seen it, but we'll find out. That would be, that would be awesome. Oh, God. <laughs> Look, uh, I know Sunny has like enough kids more than, but Sabrina like it would be nice for her to actually have storylines and something interesting to do besides not having a relationship with Patrick and not having a relationship with Carlos. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? I, I, I've i seen, like, a teaser where Mikey is going to have something for her. I don't know. What? What about Rosalie? I don't know. What ha what the is hell she, happened to Rosalie? We haven't seen her in forever. Yeah, it's like it's like she's got this big goddamn secret in, in, 
and and we don't know what it is. I want to know what yeah, it is. Yeah, that, that can't be the end of that. Plus, she and he, she and um Chad Duel, uh, and I don't know, I don't remember the actress who plays Rosalie, but they have they had a really nice chemistry together. Yeah. Which <laughs> he, 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 I just never it, that never clicked for me. Like I liked him in. Which is weird because I so it was probably I guess Kiki the character not the actress chemistry because I liked him in Star but um, I really was hoping that Rosalie would stick around um, for Michael not Morgan yeah but, but we'll, we'll see how that all plays out which speaking of Kiki there's a new Kiki there is it's too soon to tell for me I don't know if I like her yet yeah I I'm liking her so far it's it's definitely taking some time to get used to especially since first you know Kristen Al Kristen Al Alderson Right? Alderson. Alderson. You know, she she was the one who originated Kiki, and it's like so it's like my mind is still has her in there. It's like I see Kiki, I see her, so you know. Um, but so far so good, I'd have to say. Yeah, I mean, I don't like dislike her. I just you know I'm reserving judgment. Yeah. Oh uh, lordy, but um, but while all this custody hearing is going on, you know, Delia has this memorial planned for Ava. Which, yeah, you know, hey, you know, mother's gonna do what mother's gonna do. And so, you know, Julian goes up there, her, you know, Ava's art gallery friends are up there, and Morgan and Kiki are able to take Avery, which is important, because while they're up there, you know, ju the judge got switched out. It was a, a, a female judge, I forget her name. And in the middle of everything, she was switched out with Judge Walters. Oh, crap. Yeah, and Alexa said what I think half the audience was thinking, what did you do? It's like, oh, Mikey. Oh, Mikey, dude. That is both, that is both, that is both, oh, God, horrifying and kind of brilliant when, when, when taking on Sonny. Because I have, yeah. I have very little doubt that Sonny would pull the same thing if he, if he felt things were not going in his favor. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't, like, I feel like there's a difference between, like, how I judge characters, right? So, like, from some years so when I'd be like, okay, yeah, I would expect that from you. But it really just sort of undercuts Michael's moral high ground when he pulls shit like that. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, his, his grandmother happens to be, uh, uh the Sleeping judge. Sleeping with the judge, yeah. Yeah. Sure Oops. That. And it's pretty much confirmed. If not Michael, then definitely Monica. Oh, Yeah. You know, one way or the other. And and I'm seeing all of this hate going towards Sonny from the quarter means, which admittedly is well-deserved, I mean... Oh, yeah, yeah, I totally get why they hate him. Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, just even going back to when Michael was a baby, I mean, Sonny basically forced AJ to give over rights to Michael. Okay, okay. Now, now, yeah. now, no. yes. Okay. AJ also kidnapped Christina, Morgan, and Michael and faked Michael's death and then traumatized Michael into thinking that his parents didn't love or want him anymore. So I really have no sympathy for AJ. For the rest of the Quartermains, I yeah. feel bad for them and their loss. But AJ himself, no. I was about to get to the rest of the Quartermains as well. So. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I have a lot of hatred towards AJ. Can it's you okay. Tell? It's okay. Now, now do bear in mind that that the, the horrible stuff he's done, and I admit, and I and I acknowledge it. I acknowledge it's horrible and it's it's very problematic, the stuff that he did. It was all after Sonny had him, you know, hung on a meat hook, and made him sign away his paternal rights. So you know, and the reason it got to that point is because Carly, for whatever reason, didn't think AJ would be a good father, even though AJ was trying his hardest. Alcoholic. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying that all people who have problems with alcohol are terrible parents. Yeah. I'm just saying this specific yeah. instance is probably what led Carly to think yeah. that, among others. But at the same time, at that point, he was trying to better himself. You know, he was trying to get off the alcohol, stay on the wagon, and then Carly drugged him, poured alcohol over him, and tossed him in an alley, made him think he had fallen off the wagon. Which, of course, he's he he thinks he's fallen off the wagon. So of course, he he, he his 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 um. His despair kind of rises a little bit. He's like, I've fallen off the wagon, uh, you know. And so, what does he do? What 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 you would probably expect somebody to do? He goes back to drinking. Thus, you know, Car uh, you know, it basically Carly kind of manipulated the situation a little bit. You know, the outcomes 
as they were from from bo- all sides, you know, was horrible anyway. From Sonny causing, you know, forcing AJ to sign the rights over to AJ kidnapping and, and doing all of this other stuff that he did as well. It's all horrible. But, you know, to, to, you know at, at, at the start out there, you know, it was, it was kind of started manipulated with Carly, you know, so... It's, oh, it's, okay. It's one of those... But it's, it's not like AJ was, like... A good person, and then Carly made him evil. No, I, like, exactly. He, like she might have started this particular like chain of events with Michael, but mm-hmm. well, actually, they both did that. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> that joke. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. No, but I mean, AJ was not like he wasn't a, a stand-up guy until yeah. Carly made him think he was an alcoholic. Like, no, he already had plenty of issues, oh, yeah. and yeah, Carly, you know might have exacerbated that, but he made his own choices. Yeah. Well, I mean... I don't... You can't blame Carly for this whole mess, like, oh, on no. her own. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Oh, trust me. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, Carly had her part. You know, there's Carly's part, where she manipulated, you know, AJ into thinking he'd fallen off the wagon. And then, you know, she played Sonny against him, and Sonny got custody of Michael taken away from AJ by way of me token threats and then AJ went off the deep end did kidnappings and, and everything else as well and, and it's just it, it turned into a big old big old I want to say Hetfield and McCoy but I don't know if that's a proper analogy for um, it I think it's like a generations long feud so I'm not sure it's quite applicable okay but but still it's still a big fucking feud that that you know that, that just it, it had the 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 beginnings were were not good and yeah and and like you were saying AJ's not a horrible person and I well not a horrible person was well, not the best person I mean <laughs> I I mean I remember here I don't think I was watching but I do remember him you know being you know still you know deep off the wagon and driving and J- he you know hit a tree Jason happened to be in the car and oh look Jason's brain damaged you know that sort of thing. So, you know, I, I, I do know this, and I do admit, you know, and, and see all of this, but... Yeah, but, you he's know. just, I think, kind of a total dick. Yeah. And I don't think he's a very good father, even when he did come back into Michael's life. At, like, when, um... We might have talked about this before, but when uh, Brenda, who I also don't like, by the way, um, when Brenda pulled that shit where she made Michael and, like, everyone else think that they had slept together... Mm-hmm. But really, yeah. she was just trying to, like, make Sonny upset or something. Mm-hmm. And AJ, instead of being concerned about the fact that his son was potentially, like, drunkenly taken advantage of by his, like, ex-stepmom, mm-hmm. uh, especially given what had happened to him in prison, yeah. was just like, no, oh, haha, like, sticking it to Sonny and Carly, woohoo, and, and didn't seem to give a shit about Michael's feelings or what he might be dealing with because of that. He's just a shit human being. I just really, really hate it. Did he what? Yeah, I, his initial reaction. I don't remember if he came around to that one. I'd have to go and relook at it or whatever. I don't know if he came around and sobered up, you know, so to speak, sobered up, sobered up, and realized that yeah, it, it, it's not a cool thing. And Michael's obviously very uncomfortable with it, and, and turned around on that one. But um, his initial reaction, well, after the hilarious spit take. Um, yeah. Yeah. Even I have to look at it and be like, no, dude, no. He, he's just his his first thought is never Michael. His first thought is always like, how would this like annoy Carly and Sunny? You know, like he's just he's just an immature dick. Sorry, okay, we can we can stop like <laughs> ragging on AJ now. I just yeah. it just it drives me crazy that like the basis for Michael's entire motivation for this potentially really compelling arc is it's, it's all about AJ and it's just kind of hard for like me to get behind that because I just don't give a fuck that AJ's dead like I'm glad he's gone yeah. you know so it whatever um, by the way uh, Christina was played by Lexi Ainsworth before Lindsay Morgan and she was uh, amazing there we go and I would love to see her back <laughs> yeah I would love to see a lot of these other characters back I mean hell I would like to see um, um, Serena make an appearance who is uh, Scott's daughter that's you know that's who I thought Kristen Alderson was going to be playing when they when they were being all mysterious about who those three were going to play when the One Life to Live characters were written out. Mm-hmm. I I was convinced it was going to be Serena. I thought for sure. Yeah. And then it was not. It was Kinky Throne. Yeah, and it's like oh, that's that's kind of 
kind of think that was kind of a uh, waste. Although I do think if they're going to bring in uh, Serena, they can always bring back the original actress, Carly Schroeder, I think her name is, because, you know, she would be a perfect age to play off the other young adult characters. You know, she was a kid when she was on last, though, right? Or yeah. was she... Yeah. Well, uh, she might be have moved on to other things. Yeah. I don't know. But, but yeah, she would, she would be in the same age range. Who knows? I would just really, I really hope that the fact that Bobby is involved in this whole like you know Spencer storyline with Luke and Pat and whatever, I really hope that they don't put like Bobby and um uh uh, uh Ken Trainer. Why can't I think of the actor, not oh, the character? Oh, Scott. Scotty! Oh my god, yeah. I really hope they don't put Bobby and Scotty together just because Bobby's been more heavily featured now, you know? Because I feel like after everything that went down with all that, like, I don't want... Like, I'm all for... I don't know. I just... Basically, okay. I don't want Lucy to not be a player in that storyline anymore, that sort of love triangle, just because Bobby's now getting some more spotlight. So I'm afraid they, like, just won't have Lucy on for a while. You know, and I really want her and Serena and Christina, not Christina Quintos Davis, but Christina Baldwin and Serena to come back and like, look what what the hell has Kevin been up to? And like, I just I really want they sort of dropped that thread. Yeah. With Kevin and with Lucy and the girls, they would like hint at it and they would mention them a couple times. And where's Kevin been? And who's this patient? And then we just haven't seen him in ages, except for that weird. That one like appearance with where the other actor was playing him temporarily. Yeah, that yeah. one. I was like, he, he it's like you did all right, but John Lindstrom, you know. Yeah, it just wasn't the same. Not the um, same. Yeah, I really want to see Kevin and Lucy and Scotty and Bobby and that whole thing play out properly. Mm-hmm. Oh, lordy, 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 and and so I think I think since last time, you know, the election results came in, they found like a missing ballot box that was. Ended up being heavily favored for Mayor Lomax, um, because hey, hey, Nicholas, you know, rigged the election to get Mayor Lomax in there, and so of course they can get Mayor Lomax's man in there into the uh, police commissioner position. So, so now Sloan is the commissioner. Anna's out, uh, but Anna now has Kyle Sloan's old job. <laughs> what? That was beautiful. That was a beautiful moment. Yes. I really. So I don't know what it is. I don't know why they recast um, Sloan, but it was very, I thought it was very appropriate timing because as he turned out to be even more of a slimy creep, they got an actor who comes off as even more of a slimy creep to play him. It was perfect. There you go. Um, Perfect. Oh, he's such a creep. I'm so glad that Anna was just like, oh. I'm sorry, did you think I was going to get arrested? Nope, I got your job. I'm coming for you. Watch out. <laughs> yes. This is this is an Anna I enjoy. Yes. So much more than, like, incompetent police commissioner, like, meeting Jordan in public places, and, like, you know, oh, this whole crap with, like, Faison and Duke, and, like, I don't know. I This is so much better. I just want to see her taking him down. Yes. Oh, and and oh God. Uh, oh, Sloan. Sloan also is working towards Jason's, you know, um, uh, freedom. You know, because hey, he's like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll get the DA to drop all the charges if you go undercover with the Jerome. I'm so mad about that. That is not what Nicholas meant when he said, "Take care of him. My family's heard him enough." He's supposed to just let him go and let him be happy for five seconds. Five seconds. Yeah. Jason like, cannot catch a break. Poor guy. It's like, I mean, he's like practically dead for two years. And then he's revived, and then he gets hit by a car, gets amnesia. Then it comes to find out, oh, shit, Helena put something in his head. They think literally, I think not. Oh, yeah, you know, we were discussing this on Tumblr, and mm-hmm. it's the chip had to then, even if it wasn't literally what was controlling him, it had to have served some purpose other than being like a red herring, because if she just if she did like dangerous brain surgery on him mm-hmm. just to have a decoy as a backup, like that's a little ridiculous even for Helena. Yeah. So it, it had to have been doing something, even if it wasn't what was c- controlling him. 
may not be ridiculous for Helena, but may maybe <laughs> not ridiculous for Helena rather, but maybe not ridiculous for Victor. Uh, I don't know. He seemed kind of sane. I mean, a villain, yes, yeah. but like he didn't. I don't know. I guess. I mean, I assume we'll find out eventually. Yeah. If that, if the chip really was controlling him or not. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm willing to bet it wasn't because simply because Helena's done this whole mind control shtick before with Lucky, Lucky, and she didn't need any kind of technology or anything. All she needed right. to do was hold up that damn Ice Princess diamond. Shh, that was ridiculous. Um, okay, so yeah, this whole thing though with Jason is very frustrating because Elizabeth. Okay, really, really. She, like, she, Rick came back and they had that heartfelt reunion, and I was finally gonna, like, sort of come around to Rick, because I liked Rick originally, and then he turned out to be a creep, um, but he seemed to have come back from that, he seemed to really genuinely be trying with Molly and, and wanting to win Elizabeth back, and then she just goes and, just, like, making eyes at Jake, Jason, whatever, and I'm just like, girl, no, like, stay in one lane. Yeah. Just, Focus on Rick. You you are not know. your relationship is not configured to where you can swerve your lanes. It's not configured that way. I think the writers I don't know what it is about Elizabeth because other characters manage to have relationships. They don't always like work out or whatever, but it's like the writers cannot write Liz if she's not in a love triangle. She's either single or she's in a love triangle. They don't know how to just write her in a relationship. I mean, not since the, like, like Lucky and Liz 1.0 days, like, way back in the day. Yeah. Oh, and even God then, I mean, that started out when he was into her sister. Yep, no, I take it back. They don't know how to write Liz <laughs> if she's not in the love triangle. And, and, and you know what's really kind of sad, though? Was was what broke ended up breaking the triangle in, in the end, you know? Was Lucky taking care of her after she got raped? Oh, that was a beautifully handled storyline. I mean, it was. It was, it's, it's rough. It's rough to watch it. If you go back, it's on YouTube, which is how I watched it, yeah. um, obviously, because I wasn't watching back then, but it was very well handled. It was. I, re I remember watching it semi-live. We taped it off the TV, but, you know, because it was on when I was at school, so. <laughs> Couldn't watch it live live, but, you know, hey. Uh, oh, wow, taped it off the TV. I, I am kind of, kind of dating myself a little bit. <laughs> Ugh! But, yeah. Oh, lordy, lordy. I mean, yeah, Lucky... I think Lucky will always be my first choice for, for Elizabeth. Yeah. Always. Oh, yeah. But in, in the current climate, with Lucky nowhere to be seen, I actually just really enjoy Rick. I think Rick Hurst is a wonderful actor, and he's just very charismatic and charming, and he can just turn that on, and I kind of... I kind of will tentatively put aside my extreme skepticism as to Rick's, you know, morals. Um, it, it, if he continues on the current path, I, I would like Liz with him rather than Jason. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, pending his darker side not coming out. Yeah, and also pending his memory returning. Oh, no, Jason's, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, because, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, so sorry to Liz and Jason fans, but when his memory comes back, and it will. Mm -hmm. he, there's, I don't care if he's with Liz at the time. I'm not saying he's going to like drop her instantly, because he's not an asshole. Jason is a gentleman. Yeah. But there's no way when his memory comes back, he's not going back to Sam. Like, it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, it, the most awkward time for his memory to come back would be when he's in bed it, with someone with else. With Liz. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. anybody, you know. Well, he, yeah. I, I'm just imagining it. Just, just he's going at it, and all of a sudden, he calls out Sam's name, and oh, he looks down. Hey, that's and, so yeah, not I, I, mean, I, I realize it's not going to happen on the. I realize it's not going to happen on screen, but that would be hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, wait. I have a question though. Do you think mm -hmm. he's going to remember before everyone finds out? He's Jason, or do you think people are gonna find out he's Jason and he still won't remember? Because I feel like it, I feel like they're gonna go route one. Like I feel like he's gonna remember before everyone knows, obviously. But I think it will always be more interesting because then it would be like that whole thing after the car accident again, where everyone knows who he's supposed to be and there's all that pressure on him, and he doesn't remember yet. 
I think that could be an interesting way to go. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know. I think that would be kind of fun. Yeah. Um, We'd have to... Although I guess they did that recently with Lulu, too, when she lost her memory. Mm-hmm. And everyone knew who she was. So I guess, you know, they've kind of played that out recently. But I think it might be just all those layers of memories and whatever for Jason and his, like, multiple brain surgeries. Yeah. Oh, lordy. But uh, real, real quick, we are about out of time. I, I did okay. want to touch on uh, Franco and Nina real quick. Because, okay. because Franco did bust out of Pentonville. Um... Oh God! Why? Why did he get put in Pentonville? I can't. I can't quite remember. Oh God! What, I don't know. Oh, which Which thing did he do? Uh, I'm trying to remember which one it was. Um, 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 so um, um, many. Uh, I don't think he killed anybody. But yeah, no, I I don't know. What? That's so weird. That wasn't even that long ago. No, it was it was the baby. Oh yeah, they kidnapped a baby and took her across country. You know, Borders. took her into Canada. Okay, yeah, and he got put in Pentonville because they tried to claim insanity, and they're like, yeah, um, all that time can't before. Pull that yeah, you can't yeah. pull that shit. You got the, we got the tumor out your head. We saw it. All right, so you're you're going to Pentonville. You know, Miss Miss Nina here is going over to to fucking Shady Brook, where where Heather happens to be. And somehow or another, I I think Franco ended up. Um, yeah, this is this is where Franco got his balls towards uh, Sonny and Julian. He's like, he, he finds them with a com- you know, with, with a with a uh, contraband cell phone, and he's like, yeah, um, I, you can either let me use it for a little bit to call Nina and make sure she's okay, or I let the guards know you have it and all your plans are not are are going to be fruitless. Um, so of course they give it over to him. He finds out. Then he finds out that Heather is planning on going after Nina. Which, yeah, you don't do that. <laughs> I, I think I, I think we have found one of Franco's berserk, berserk buttons. Going after his family or people that he cares about. You don't do that. So, yeah, I will say I still hate Franco. Yeah. I will always hate. I hate. I really hate Franco. Yeah. If you if you didn't know. Yeah. Um, but I have I have really enjoyed him uh, and Nina's scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, they, uh, what is it, Michelle Stafford and Roger Howarth are just delightful together. They are. So kudos to them. Yes. Uh, so he breaks out of there, gets to Heather in time before, before Heather shoots Nina up with some LSD. And he ends up taking it from her, and he's, and he's like, okay, you know what, I get caught, I'm going to have to go back to Pittenville and all that stuff. So what he does instead is he shoots himself with the LSD. And, oh, did he? Oh no. Okay. Well, he did. Yeah, he did. But but, but the the effects didn't last as long as he made it out that they were. So and of course Nina's pissed. They're like, why would you do that? I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to stay with you. And all of that good stuff. And there are so many. Th- oh God, Franco. <laughs> he is he has become a pop culture meme machine. Recently, I think because it's like because it's like when he was. Faking, you know, the LSD overdose thing. I mean, I think he was making a lot of references to like the real James Franco's work, and yeah, yeah, and a whole bunch Some of other that. other things. And it's like, and he called... yeah, I gotta say, like his actual references, you know, some of them are funny, some of them are not, whatever. But I, I do really like the the, the comment that um uh, that Nina made. Just I think it was just this week when um. She said something like, "Oh, by the way, like thanks for keeping the pop culture references to like pre 1993 for me." <laughs> that was so cute. Because sometimes I forget that she was supposed to have been out of it for 20 years because they haven't really used that, which could be great fodder for storyline or at least for character development for her. Mm-hmm. But while she, she talks about it a lot, it's it's more like they like tell they don't show so much. But I thought that was a really cute reference to that fact. Oh yeah. Oh, and and of course the the best the best reference I have seen thus far is when Franco goes to confront Luke, who is in Shady Brook now because well he <laughs> bit off Scott's ear, and Luke is you know he you know he's restrained to his bed of course, and Franco makes his way into Luke's room, and he says, "I'm Franco Baldwin. You hurt my father. Prepare to die." Yeah, that was a nice one. I'm like, oh shit! You know, if I if he hadn't made it for me, I was gonna make it. 
Oh, Lordy, that is the best. That is the best. Uh, but I, I do like seeing him and Nina get together. They're so sweet. Yeah, I, it's because, I, like, I know, you know, anyone who's been um, listening to this podcast or following me on Tumblr knows, like, how much I've hated Franco and complained about him all the time. And I think part of it is that they, I feel like the show was trying to play him more, like, oh, like, I, like basically I wasn't sure what they were doing. Like, were they trying to say, oh, yeah, it really was all the brain tumor? They, I don't know, they were writing him in this weird, like, sympathetic way, and they were putting him with Carly, and it was just this... I just could not swallow it. I couldn't believe it of Carly. I couldn't believe the show was trying to do this. And so now with him having it with Nina, they're they're allowing Roger Howarth to like play a romance, which is great, but doing so in a way that doesn't negate his awfulness. They're sort of embracing him, you know, like threatening Luke, trying to kill Luke, you know, scheming with Nina. And it's great because, like, now it's at a place where I can enjoy him as a character, but as this sort of, like, semi-villainous person with enough human connections that you kind of root for them. Mm-hmm. You know what? He he does care in his own way about Kiki, about Scotty, about Nina. And so I'm, I, I no longer want to throw up every time I see him on screen. So that's Yay. awesome. Yay! Basically. So, and and any of the any of the horrible stuff that he would do from here on out, I, I I get the feeling that some of the horrible well okay I don't know about I don't know how much of the horrible stuff that he had done in the past I don't know how much of it was like for just the evils evils or whatever or or if it was just him wanting to hurt get at Jason and hurt Jason or what have you you know that like like that single motivation thing that was like you know he's kind of flatter that way I think. But now, now, like you were saying, you know, with with the, his connections with like Scott and Nina and Kiki, you know, humanizes him a little bit more. And and again, the berserk button is don't hurt somebody he cares about, or he will end you, or try to. You know, that that then that's what I get. Yeah, is it is it horrible to like want to smother Luke for biting off his father's ear? Yeah, but it's a lot more understandable. <laughs> Because I mean, you know, somebody bit off my father's ear. Okay, I wouldn't want to smother them, but I would want to. I would want to hurt them. You know, yeah. I mean, that... and it, it definitely helps that they're no longer like writing one of my favorite characters severely out of character in order to make that storyline work. Yeah. and I am talking about Carly there. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> that helps. That helps. Ah uh, yes. Yeah. So. Um... So with that, we're we're gonna get out of here for this particular time. I know there's so much we did not cover over the oh, past few months, yeah. and hopefully we'll make this a little bit more regular. Um, if you guys, everybody who follows us on like Tumblr, Twitter, or wherever you happen to follow us, you know, go ahead and you know send us some things if you want us to talk about certain characters or or certain arcs or whatever that we may have missed, or maybe if you want to know about something that happened in the past and don't really want to look it up on the wiki or anything or if you want to look it up on the wiki but you just want to get our thoughts on it you know let us know you know i mean th- this particular show does have its own tumblr uh poor charlie podcast com. i believe that is if nothing else it's going to be in the links below the video version over on youtube and on the various sites that i put the show on so that'll be there you could just click on that and just send away i need i'll just make sure the ask box is open <laughs> oh but speaking of social media, uh, where could we find you if we wanted to get in touch with you and talk with you, Julia? That would be gh-musings.tumblr.com. Sweet. And as for me, you can find me on the social medias, on the Twitters, Tumblrs, wherever, as gomer 21 X. You can also find my Facebook fan page. Got a fan page up now since the last time we were on here. And that is simply Gomer the Ranting Thespian over on Facebook. Go give it a like you'll get some updates on the things that i'm doing and all that good stuff and if you want to find my other shows and my other videos and and everything else going on uh just head over to rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com and check those out you can check out the other contributors on there as well they you know i am i am a part of two sites that that have a lot of really great and talented people. In fact, uh, my site rtgomer.com, we just recently had a uh, talent pickup. Six new talents that were picked up, and they're starting to make their make their appearances. And they are amazing and awesome. And you should go and check them out. Um, 
I do not run websites that are cool stuff, but come to my Tumblr and chat with me about General Hospital or Days of Our Lives or any other awesome shows Yeah, that you want to. Yes, there you go. And uh, I think that is about it. Yeah. Because everything else that I might want to say is in the is in the show is in the post show bumper. <laughs> uh, so again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Julia signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is The Complex by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to patreon.com slash gomer two one double X. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly patron-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.